Hi, I am Jan Reardon, and I am here representing the Jennifer Reardon Foundation. Jennifer Reardon is my sister-in-law, and I am very um, honored and, and pleased to be able to carry on her mantra of being kind, loving, caring, and sharing, and identifying different programs and people that support that uh, mantra is very important to me and to our family. Um, Jennifer has an amazing legacy. Uh, she was larger than life in life and continues to be in her passing. So that brings us a, a great deal of comfort. And I was just thinking on the way over, I'm so fortunate to have so many people from the Burlington area that um, have been so supportive, whether they, they knew Jen or not, they know of her and people rise to the occasion when you talk about being kind. And, and Vermont is, um, to me, it's, it's the best there is as far as that community. But the four pillars of Jen's foundation, the Jennifer Reardon Foundation, uh, our early childhood education, women's empowerment, financial literacy, and community vibrancy. So today I have the absolute pleasure, I'm gonna be able to kick back here, have some popcorn and just listen because I am so excited to be talking to John Pelletier who is the director of um, the Center for Financial Literacy over at Champlain College. And with that, um, I'm just so excited to hear about the training program that, that John has in place and what is happening at the state level to be able to bring personal finance into K through 12, primarily high school, but we're gonna get to hear all about that. And John, I just wanna say thank you for being here. This Thanks is John me. Pelletier. And I'd like you to just give us a little bit of background, you know, kind of get us up to speed on the status of things with personal finance in the school system. Because, you know, I look back and think, you know, where did home ec go? All of those nice basic things and personal finance, you know, I don't think you can talk to somebody in high school that knows how to do their taxes or knows how to do a budget and, and to plan on you know, purchasing a home or getting their first apartment and all of those pieces. I mean, it's overwhelming. And to think that we're getting real close to bringing that into the schools is very exciting. And I would just love to obviously have you, you know, get us up to speed on what is happening in Vermont. Sure. Well, let's start with where we are and where we could be. Per yes, <laughs> yeah, that's always a good distinction. So, so, so uh, w where we are, and we, we've, we've made progress. Uh, so our center started in 2011. And when, when the center started in Vermont, uh, we had these framework standards where everything your child needed to know about personal finance in grades K through 12 would fit on an eight by 11 piece of paper and about, <laughs> and about three and a half inches. Right, so, right. So that changed. Sounds familiar, yes, That's, That changed uh, in, in, uh, due, due to the good work of the Agency of Education uh, as part of a, a total rewrite of all standards and bringing us up to other national standards like the Common Core English and, and Math and national standards on Phys Ed and national standards on Science Of course, and it should studies. be right there, exactly. They, they adopted these great national standards that uh, the, the most recent version is the standards were created by committees created from the Council of Economic Education and the Jumpstart National Coalition yes, read a lot in Washington, D.C. And so those standards have been around, I, I don't even know if it's the fifth or sixth edition or the seventh. Uh, they've been around for a while. Uh, what I would call m modern national standards in financial literacy probably uh, came into being just around 2000, maybe 98 or 1999. Okay. Okay. So, what, so what I think of financial yeah. literacy in its modern sense as opposed to home economics, which is <laughs> exactly. a lot of things other than financial literacy, uh, that, that is, it's not even 25 years old right. in, in a lot of respects in our country. And, and so there's, there's been a movement to, to move those along. So those standards, uh, they were implemented or approved, I should say, by the State Board of Education in January of 2017. One of the problems with Vermont is we are, we're not a standards-based state anymore. We are a proficiency-based state. So we ran into a problem where all these standards have to be converted into provisions. And we do okay, this. I did not know that. New Hampshire does it and nobody else does it. So I won't get into okay, that. Okay, that's its own topic, uh, right? But, but, it, but it created a hurdle where we needed to get these standards through the system and financial literacy was going to be behind a lot of other topics. Mm -hmm. So we were really fortunate and we raised money from 
uh, my center was able to raise money from uh, the, the National Life Group, a big, big donation from Northfield Savings Bank. I saw that. Uh, that is and, wonderful. And uh, also from Next Gen Personal Finance, which is a nonprofit in this space. And what we did is we were able to hire a, a group of 16 educators, okay. pay them. We worked on this project for a couple of years. We were just ready to release everything. It got out on the website and then COVID hit. And, and the penultimate delivery was supposed to be uh, educator training, uh, six different events across the states, two for uh, elementary, two for middle school teachers, and two for high school. And so we had to kind of go back to our donors and say, look, we got to figure out a way to deliver this online. Right. And so we did. And we actually- Fabulous delivered uh, uh, this education online, not once but twice, because once it's there, you could re-release it again. Uh, and, and my understanding is that was the largest attended professional development event oh. by educators uh, in Vermont ever, to hear. according to the AOE. Right. right? It Just was, to know, I mean, the need is there and, and it's appreciated and, and uh, you know, everybody is aware, whether it be the parents and the educators and the schools, people know the importance and it's just a matter of having it happen. So just to be clear, because I've obviously been out of school for a little while here, but is it available, but as an elective, and this would make it available as a requirement, or is it not even available? Technically, so I think technically, the, technically the way it works is these standards have been approved. There's, okay. there's, there's a, an expectation that something is being done at the local district level. Uh, the supervisory union level. There are no mandate police. See, that's what I was wondering. There's so no it's enforcement really not monitored. Mechanism. There's, there's not really a, a big review method. And so, um, yeah, I'll just focus on the high schools okay, in the state and what's that. going okay. on now because it gets even more complex when you get into elementary and middle. But at the high school level, you, you know, there, there are a, a couple of ways to deliver this information. You can deliver it in a standalone personal finance class. So right. that would be a half year course where nothing else is taught in personal finance. And uh, in about 12% or 13% of the high schools in the state, and I, I think with some changes that have already been approved in South Burlington, BFA St. Albans, it's, it's going to be either seven or eight high schools in the state, Wonderful. out of about 60 plus, that will have a high school graduation mandate. You have to take that Fabulous. course oh. to graduate. I mean, that is the end goal, I'm assuming, right? Oh, Isn't that, that the, the... That's the gold standard, yes, right? Exactly. If, you, if you wanted yes. to do that. So that's that's about, so that means about 12% of the state is getting it that, that way. And, the, and excuse me, John, but what is the personal finance curriculum? What does that look like? A lot of different topics. I mean, it, it, it's um, career and income, so really focusing on, on, on things like student loans. Right, because I noticed Winooski High School has yeah, yeah. done very, very well. Yeah, yeah Courtney's and fantastic. Yes, yeah. yes, I was so pleased. And, you know, again, talking about, you know, really, okay, what if you get out of school and 40% of Vermonters are not going to college Absolutely in correct. the state? And Absolutely so correct. how do you function out in the world and make sure that you're not making mistakes at this age that haunt you 20 years later and, and the importance right. of your credit score and everything? So that's all covered during that particular oh, yeah. I mean, semester? Yeah, that and things like, you know, important things like understanding the, uh, I think a key concept found foundational concept is uh, compound interest. Exactly, right. right. Not only so as it relates to savings and, and growing your retirement account, but debt, whether yes, it's mortgage yes. or automobile loan. Or the, and that's the all most, covered. Or credit, credit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Fabulous. Understanding you know, where to find your credit reports because there's always mistakes on them. Uh, uh, it, it covers uh, anything to do with credit, anything to do with banking products, Fabulous. savings, investing, career and income, student uh. loan. And career and income means, you know, even that whole college exploration piece. Sure, exactly, how you're paying for that. You know, using Courtney and, and Winu uh, Courtney Paquette, who's the high school educator at, at Winooski, that's a great example of, uh, uh, you know, and, and many of the teachers at programs like this where, you know, students go and they say, okay, uh, if, if I got that job that I'm interested in, what's the starting pay? Yeah. All right, now find out. What's it, what's it going to cost me to rent my own apartment? Right. How am I going to pay for transportation? And what do the benefits really mean? They, they mentioned like, that too. Correct. It was like, sure. you know, the value sure. of that. People think, oh, it's not important. Well, you talk about a 401k. Health care. Exactly. Health care. I mean, pretty, pretty yeah, benefits important. are a pretty yeah. key component. Yeah. So that was mentioned. And Absolutely. then 
as we discussed earlier, my good friend Bob Fredette is up at Lamoille and right, he's doing right, an amazing Bob, yeah. job with an entrepreneurship program and running a business. So the students are really getting to budget in real life as far as how to make a business successful. Yeah, and so, very George Cook, uh, an educator at U32, has a very similar pro pro yes. program to Bob's. So, so there's pockets of excellence uh, across the state. So if it's not being done that way through a standalone course, it, it's uh, two other ways it can happen. Okay. One is an elective. Right. Now, the, pro the problem with elective, by its very nature, means that probably 75%, maybe Are more, not. will never take that course before they graduate. So an elective isn't guaranteed access to the topic or the knowledge. Exactly. Uh, and then the other place it might be is embedded in uh, something like an economics course. Right. There, and that's the way it's delivered in a lot of states. There's quite right. a few states. Which is great, but then again, how, what's the percentage that do not go in that direction for right. economics? I mean, it well, would have been like, hey, sign me up. I was in a different direction. Say if you're in more and with English and language Absolutely and that's correct. your preference Absolutely then correct. that's why having that you know course in place as a requirement you know, can be life altering. Oh, ab absolutely. It, it, uh, fi personal finance knowledge is, is life altering. It's not just life altering to, to the students. It's actually can be life altering to the educator. Uh, and so, to the community. I yeah. mean, you talk about community vitality. Well, it comes back to that. We want absolutely. people to thrive and to absolutely. obviously stay in Vermont and to be here and to know how to handle their finances to be able to manage that lifestyle. Yeah, and it, it really comes down to, I mean, if you can compound interest, you can build wealth greater. The other thing is if you can uh, focus on having the highest credit score possible, that can literally in a lifetime save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest payments that you can do something else with. Exactly, with your life. exactly. And, and, um, uh, so so it's, it, it's, it's critically important skills, uh, budgeting, th things, things of that nature. But you know, personal finance is uh, it's a difficult course to teach because it's, it's not like a lot of other courses where, uh, so the best way I can think about it is you can get a straight A on a personal finance exam and fail in life. Because even though you might have the knowledge, you might not implement it in your own life because uh, uh, you, maybe you're someone who can't defer gratification. Maybe True. you're a bit of a spendthrift by nature, right. or, or right. you know. But I'd have to believe, and, right. and obviously, you know, there are models out there. I don't know what kind of monitoring does go on as far as tracking some of the activities of certain kids that have gone through a program such as yeah. this, but to be able to see the benefits, and true, you're never going to hit every student in the same way, just personality-wise and everything, but it, again, it's one of those things where it's, you know, I can always remember saying to my son when he's kind of struggling, like, you know, do I go back to school when he's in between sophomore, junior year, and it's like, you're never going to say, I wish I didn't have this degree. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely. never going to say, I wish I didn't know so much about personal finance. Even though some kids might take their own path on when to implement that knowledge that they have, we still have to get it in there. Sure, because, sure. you know, sadly, so many mistakes are made just because of the lack of knowledge not choosing not to, to apply it, but just not even knowing. So yeah. this is so exciting. And, and you know, the studies show that schools that are in impoverished areas are less likely to bring this into, you know, the curriculum. But then Winooski's highlighted and, and obviously sure. struggles, you know, with, you know, poverty, but also, you know, English as a second language, and, and they can do it. So to me, I'm thinking, hey, Winooski, what a, what a you know, way to really you know, get on the radar to show that other communities can do this. So I'm, I'm so happy that we have something like that in this area to point to for success. Yeah, and Courtney's been doing it there for, oh gosh, I, I, I think almost 16 years. So. Oh, I had no idea it was yeah, that. Yeah, it's, yes. it's been a long time. Yes. Not as a requirement, that's more right, recent. Right. But, but she's been teaching that particular course for, for, for a long time. And, and to your point, you know, the, the, yes, the data absolutely shows. The point I was trying to make is um, what makes financial literacy more like uh, driver's ed or sex ed or you know, uh, sexual harassment prevention training is you're trying to change behavior through knowledge. Yes. So there's an extra step. You're it right. That's a great analogy. Just, yes, right? absolutely. It's, it, not everything uh, Not everything is about behavior. Like math, I don't think is about behavior. It's did you get the problem right or right, not? Right. Or if you take a physics class or things of that nature. Right. So this is about changing behavior 
as well as imparting knowledge. It, you, it has two components and that makes it more difficult. And just to kind of muddy the waters, does behavior modification ever get folded into this course? Is that a part, in fact, yeah, of yeah. a personal finance semester? You know, perhaps that's something yeah. that really needs to be one of the key elements. Yeah, it's, I mean, when you're trying to teach the right behaviors. Right? Yes, yes. And, and, that, and that's, that's in, 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 in the right habits of mine, if you will. And then the other, the other piece is, or the other point where you, you, you mentioned is, you know, does it work? What do the studies show? The studies show it work. And, and uh, my favorite researcher is Carly Urban at Montana State University, a good friend. And, and the, the reason I love her work is she uses these giant national databases, either from uh, federal student loan data or data from places like Experian and TransUnion. And, and she has looked at places where mandates go through requirements to teach this okay uh, at, as a high school graduation requirement yes. in certain states and and she has looking at the at data before and after Fabulous. and and in that young cohort and what does it show it shows you know I'll just go through them really quickly please it goes through uh, 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 first and foremost we see increases materially, these are all statistically significant, increases in credit scores, reductions in 90-day default rates. We see with regard to those taking out student loans from states that have this, they're, they're doing the right thing behaviorally. By that I mean, <clears throat> you know, they're going to maximize Pell Grants, they're going to maximize uh, subsidized versus unsubsidized loans first. They're, they're going to grab those federal loans which have a lot more protections, including the income-based repayment before they get private loans. Yes. And uh, the, other, the other thing that came out of our research with student loans, which was surprising, is that students uh, from those states with student loans, uh, they spend less, uh, they, or I should say they have less credit card debt. Because what, what people don't understand is credit cards are used a lot to pay for education, whether it's books or sometimes to kind of complete a payment uh, for, for, for right. tuition uh, for, for some folks. Uh, and, then, and then you were mentioning uh, 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 the, the equity issue, which is if, if a state doesn't require or guarantee is probably a better word, that everyone get equal access to personal finance education before they graduate from high school. Carly and NextGen, and I was involved with looking at that data years ago too, and, and it's constantly being updated. We, we, we want to see in those states where you don't require it and it's left to local control, what happens? And, and, and the presumption of those of us involved with looking at that data based on our own personal experience was it was being inequitably delivered into the schools. I see. And it is. So the way, the way it works is if, if you come from a school district that is 75% uh, or more free and reduced lunch mm -hmm. or 75% or more uh, 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 black and brown students, so majority, minority, right? Right. Those school districts, the chance of you being in a district in those states that don't have this requirement, the chance of you getting that is one out of 20 or one out of 21. Okay, so okay. I hate to be naive here, but why? Well, and, let me let me explain okay. what happens okay. Let's, in rich white districts. Okay. In districts where you have a less than 25% free and reduced lunch right. or a less than 25% black and brown population, the odds of you getting it are one in seven. So so basically you're three times more likely, right? Right. To get it if you're rich and white. Exactly. But that's what I want. Poor wondered. and urban. Most right. And right. There's there's a big divide between And and urban. both students need it. I'm not making light of the fact that both need that, but why, you know, again, would it be I, I, yeah. I, I think it's the parents, probably, uh, I'm guessing. Or, Not or, as much of a priority and pushing for that. Yeah, or, or, or the opposite, right? That, that the, the, perhaps the parents are a little bit more involved in pushing for it. In, oh, I see. In, in, yes. In, in, in the, in, and perhaps the, the white or richer communities and seeing it because there, there's a, the reality about financial literacy is there's a demographic divide. Yes. Right? And so who's the most financially literate? And there are, there are uh, a couple of organizations that do this. 
Uh, uh, there's the Georgetown University Global Financial Literacy Excellence Center with S&P. The S&P organization does a study uh, survey every year of adults, and, and FINRA does a survey. And the, 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 both of them show the, pretty much the same thing, and there's tons of data on this. The more educated you are, the more financially literate you are. Right. The richer you are, the more financially literate you are. There's a racial divide that's pretty dramatic. Yes. Whites and Asians look very different than uh, Hispanics and blacks. Yes. Um, there is a gender difference. Males are fi more financially literate than women. And, that, and that's currently the case. It has not shifted. It, it, it has young, so there's, there, there, there is a difference, a, a nearer difference the younger you are. There's an age yes, thing going on yes, there too. Yes. Uh, so there's there's an age element of it, um, and and it's like a multifaceted, right? I yeah, mean, so many layers. Yeah. And then people who are, uh, if you're working, you're more financially literate than the unemployed or disabled. Yes. And so there there are all these things that are that are real that have all sorts right. of, of impacts, and so. You know, you, you, arguably, when you look at that kind of equity issue at the high school level, you, you know, you might almost be arguing that the communities that need it the least yes. are the most likely to get, to get the it. most of it. Yes. And that's why I think, you know, you really, it, it, if, you, if you really want to address this issue, we need to guarantee access for all. And that's why I'm excited Absolutely. with the House bill. Yes, so please tell us a little bit myself included, but the audience, what is the status and what is the current situation regarding the legislature on this topic of bringing this to schools and having it be um, guaranteed? Well, I mean, the first, you know, there's a guaranteed access bill that's in front of the House right now. Okay. It's uh, H228. So H period 228. Okay. If you want to look it up at the Vermont legislature, you can see it. Um, and and uh, the bill was uh, had 20 co-sponsors, so that's great. That's a pretty good number. Yes. And, uh, and who are um, co-sponsors? Uh, well, like an example. Rep Jer Representative Jerome is the lead sponsor. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, and she she she's she's the lead sponsor. But they're like I come from Stowe, Jed Jed Lipsky, who's my rep, is on it. And, Wonderful. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's so it's statewide. It's not really... it, it's statewide and it's Democrats, it's Republicans, it's not um, it, it's 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 not one party or the right. other. It's and, and what we're seeing this across the country. This is a purple issue. This exactly. is not this exactly. is not a Thank blue God. This <laughs> right. is not yeah, a that helps issue. a lot of, with all the other layers, you know. Uh, At least you yeah. don't have to mix that in. And and, and so uh, hard, hard to know because you, you know there's the crossover date in 4 weeks. So if it doesn't come out of committee, the odds of it uh, uh, becoming a law this year or low. The good news is it's a two-year session. Oh, okay. So if it doesn't happen this year, we yes. still get another bite at the apple. And what would cause it to not come out of committee this year? What's happening? I is think it it's priorities. Um, the, 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 I think the fundamental question is, because you have to have hearings, right? And they've had a few, but yes. they have to have a lot more. They have to allocate their hearing time I to see. certain bills that perfect. perhaps they feel are a little bit more Press burner, right? Yeah. So there's like, for example, the bill where they're looking at how do we reallocate uh, the 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 money to the different schools on the pure pupil uh, per pupil weightings uh, based on you know ELL and free and reduced lunch and all those sorts of different right. uh, minority right. categories and things of that that nature. Uh, and P, y y y similar to, uh, I was either last year or the year before they had uh, a look at how they're going. They changed the funding mechanism. Uh, for for uh, uh, you know people with uh, 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 disabilities, you yes, know, the, the personalized learning, uh, yes. the, the uh, uh, IEP type plans. So the nature. personal finance curriculum is that pure as a bill, or is that kind of tucked into a few other things? Right now, right now it's a standalone bill, and that's okay. the that's the other thing. It's conceivable. I think it really, to be blunt, I yeah. think it whether or not this gets passed at all. Or whether or not it gets passed uh, this session is entirely dependent upon the voters actually reaching out to their legislators or reaching out to the House and Senate Education Committee members, 
they're easy to find online. Their emails are all there. But what committee. motivates that person to do so? Are they aware that it's the, the status right now of where it is and what needs to happen to push it forward? Is if they're, probably not, and, and that's that's going to be the goal of different or right, so local organizations like Jumpstart Vermont and others. Will yeah, they're, they're, people are going to need to get out the and word communicate right? Because I, I I think you know the poll that we we uh, paid for. Uh, a group in Raleigh, North Carolina did, it's overwhelmingly supported exactly. by Vermont adults. Yes, it's not I even saw close. That. Right, it's, I saw those there, results. There, there was, uh, you know, one poll uh, question where they, they were asking, after you found out that only 12% of students, high school students of Vermont have guaranteed access for, access for us, how you know, important to, do you think this is? Very important, somewhat important. <laughs> you know, those, those two together were, uh, um, I don't know, like, over 90 percent. Right. So to me, it just seems, and again, I mean, I'm not in the trenches like you are. You know so much more. But me on the outside, it's like, well, it's a given. It has to go through. It has to start. Like, why isn't it? You know, but I understand yeah, the process obviously is, is cumbersome, but it just seems, and thankfully it's a two-year session, it just seems as though you get this far. Like, how can you lose traction now? There, well, I mean, we are a local control state to such a degree right, right. that what virtually here? every graduation requirement is at the local level. Right. So if you, I, I believe there are, I, I believe it's uh, Algebra 1 in Geometry. I, I believe that's it. That There are very few classes that are required. Yes. There are topics. I was surprised at that. I know. That, that are required. And that has changed and, a lot. And, uh, so that doesn't mean that there, there aren't like, you know, you have to take three math and four English or th those requirements exist at everybody's high schools, yes. but they're not state mandated. There aren't like minimum state requirements in many other states. That's set at the local level. Right, so as you said, we're very similar to New Hampshire, but most states are not that way, where it's localized? It uh, is more statewide, uh, would you say, it, it, typically? It, 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 having spent a lot of time looking at all the states, I would say this level of freedom left to the school district is, is in the minority. Right. Right, uh, there, impression. there are usually graduation standards, minimum standards, and by that you know so many, so many civics and history, and exactly, social studies and phys ed, or there are minimum, very clear minimum standards that are set at the uh, state level, often by the legislature or by an organization like the state board of education that we have in Vermont, uh, or a combination of the two of them through law and, on, and regulation, but. Uh, uh, and I want to be clear, we're not the only state doing it this right. way. Right. Massachusetts is very loose, and they have a great educational system. Yes, yes. For, you know, Vermont has local control. Nebraska has local control. Uh, um, you, you know, and California. And by local control, could that mean that a teacher at Essex High School could say that I want to have, you know, a certain focus on personal finance, have it be included with something? not have to jump through a lot of hoops and just kind of have that happen where yeah, it gets it, well, embedded into it, it, another class? Um, maybe. I mean, it, it usually happens. So if you look at the states, if you if you look at, um, we'll talk about like the, 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 the schools where it's required now. Okay. So where it's required now, you'll have someone like, um, you know, like like Bob or right. Courtney or somebody like that. They're, they're, they they're with the their ambassador. students. Exactly. They're gonna. You know, they might start with an elective. Say, hey, I want to do an elective. Right. And then it becomes an incredibly popular elective. And then they go, well, gee, sixty percent of the kids are taking this. And they can. They Why can don't make we make that it a shift. mandate? So and that happens. Ha it's it, happened in this state. It happens yeah. all across the country. Yeah, to to that level, common, that's impressive. It's a common yeah. way. It's a grassroots way. Yes. Yes. And very it, organic. It, it's, it's happening. It happens here. I, I know many teachers who have done it that way, and and so in those states, that's one way to get to the mandate. Right. It's that local school board, right, of either yes. the supervisory union, exactly. Uh, uh, you know, so the the local supervisory union school board is saying, hey, we're going to require this, and and um, uh, that is certainly a way it gets done. Oh, as opposed to, I want to do an elective. That's probably just the principal, right? Right, who's, and who's going to be approached to agree that it will be an elective added to the list? I see, right. So, so, so probably there, and if it's a private school, what happens? If it's a private whatever, school, they it, can do they can do whatever they want. Whatever they want to, yeah. They can do whatever they want, right. and and uh, and yeah. do you know of any private schools where that is in place? 
There, I, there certainly are some. Right. You know, right. There, there I know certainly there's certainly life some. programs. It kind of goes back to, like I was saying, yeah. with Home Ec, where it kind of folds in a, a variety of different things that you need to know when you, you know, get out of those high school years. But um, yeah, and, and then we have situations like, you know, what happened in Burlington. There was a time not that long. So I've been running this center since 2011. I, we have a, a, a graduate program, not only just for Vermont teachers, but for teachers across uh, New England and New York State, but also now across the country. And it's, it's an online graduate uh, course, three credit course. And, and um, you, you know, what we've seen happen is uh, at Burlington, they went from having a mandate right. to not having a mandate. Oh, interesting. I didn't know and, that. And that was because it was done by the business department and they got rid of the business department teachers. Oh, boy. So then yes. the program disappeared. Yes, yeah. And, and so, so that's the thing. The sustainability is key. Yeah, yeah. We are going to have to wrap it. I can't sure. believe how quickly this went by. And I am so thankful for the information that you shared with myself and, and with the audience. And again, if there is anything that I can do to get the word out or help in any way, um, please get me connected to the right person and sure. I'll, I'll get out there. I, I feel very passionate about this topic, obviously, um, as you certainly do and have committed and you know done so much in your life to, to see this happen. I would love to be as supportive as possible in moving this forward for Vermont. Thank you, Jen. Yes, yeah. thank you so thank much, you. John. This has been Appreciate great, it. and I hope that we'll continue to stay in touch. Absolutely. And again, if there's anything I can do, you know, boots to the ground or whatever, send me out there, and I'll I'll be holding up some signs for you. I'll probably get an email next week. <laughs> Good. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you so thank very you. much. Okay. okay. Bye now. Bye.